Thank you for tuning in to RTM Nation Online, where we believe that you will receive the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. If you would like to learn more about the ministry, click the link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into the message. You know, the thing about where we are right now is, and think about what Satan is okay with, is he's okay with this. And many times, a lot of us in the church, a lot of Christians, a lot of believers, we actually look like this when we're saying we're free. Simply because we can't feel the tension pulling us back to the pain that we haven't actually dealt with. Oh, amen. And so what we are going to do tonight is we have to destroy the image of failure. You know, Satan wants us to replay areas that we have failed over and over and over again. He wants us to believe that there is no new hope in what you're looking at. He wants you to believe that, and he'll try to pull on every single thing that he can to try to say, this is just like it was before, so that you can no longer pursue the new image of hope that Jesus is trying to bring to you. How does this happen? And this is just a just like a, a, a mental thing, you know, for you guys. And it happens. It happens naturally. How many of you guys have ever went to go thinking about getting a new car? And then you look up what that car is. Then all of a sudden, everywhere you go, you see this new car. You like you see the car everywhere now. Before you never saw it, but it just seems like now everywhere I look, this car is. What's happening? That's just how our minds are programmed to pull out what we are focusing on. And so if Satan can get us to replay images of our past, replay them, we'll start to focus on and concentrate the things that may, in some cases as a stretch, match up to what we've experienced before. And it becomes an internal conflict for us being able to go beyond and go into the new that God has for us. And so we find ourselves, like I say, Wednesday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, we just, we just walking around like this, looking free as someone could be. <laughs> amen. Oh, amen. And so I want to go to Ephesians 6 and 12 in the Amplified Version. I think we did a... Think we're good here. We're all on the, the same, same page. And God spoke this statement to me, but I, I said, man, that's powerful. He said, it's time to live life in the fruit of his resurrection. Amen. Man, it's time to live life in the fruit of his resurrection. And when you understand what Christ took on for us and what he destroyed as a sign of his in the sign of his resurrection you understand what freedom really looks like oh man it's beautiful but here it says and i'm reading in verse 12 and amplified it says for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood contending only with physical opponents but against depositions against the powers against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness and heavenly and spiritual fear and the spiritual fear. And so what is it telling us? It's telling us that understand that the fight that we're facing is a spiritual fight. It's a fight over our belief. It's a fight over what are we willing to, to, to download now because of what Christ has done for us. What are we willing to allow him to bring new to as a result of his resurrection? 
as a result of our relationship with them? What are we actually willing to destroy? And if we were to take an honest assessment right now, there's some people in this room that there's some areas where we haven't actually allowed God to paint a new image in. We've gotten just about this far and said, no, I don't need to go further. I'm, I don't actually need that area to be new. You know, that, that's going to cause me to have to forget some things. Because for me to press beyond this mark, I have to forget some results of my past. I have to forget some, for some of us, some real facts about my life. I'm going to have to actually say to myself, I am new. I'm going to actually have to believe that God can do something different. Because for me to make this next step, I have to tear down and disconnect from everything that was. And although it may sound so easy, it is where a lot of us are. Oh, man, how does it how does how do we know we're there? It starts with your words. What was the first response? You know, sometimes it it happens. I could I could say this, you know, when it comes to a dating relationship. Man, he's the same as all the other men I've met. The brother ain't said two words, but he just looked the same. Man, she, she remind me of that girl I dated three years ago. You have never had a conversation with her. But because she happens to like the color pink and a few girls you dated before like the color pink and they draw some similarity, you're like, that one, I, 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 I don't, I'm not trying to do new in that direction. God might be saying, hey, man, no, that's, that's the woman, that's the man I have for you. But because of the similarities that draw back to our past, we're not willing to go new this way. Okay, so we talked about dating. But then, of course, we get over here <laughs> on the other side of life. And God's telling us, hey, man, that, that, that brother, that sister that a few years ago, they may have did you did you some wrong, but uh, I want you to go talk to him because there's something you two can do together. Wait a minute, God. I mean, I know you want me to do some new things, but every time I think about that, brother, all I can remember is this. And so what happens? Our words literally start doing this. And I wanted you to see this picture. You go, you talk to the brother, and the brother says, hey, man, how you doing? I mean, he said, how you doing? The same way he said it five years ago. (laughs) Matter of fact, he pulled up in the same car he pulled up in five years ago. The relationship starts to develop. He says something, and your words say something. I've seen this before. I've seen this before. I've just seen this before. And slowly, you're not, and I just wanted you to see it clearly because we don't see what's happened spiritually sometimes, but this is what's happening. You are literally walking away with your words. Your words are starting to shape realities that are competing with the new God's trying to say, no, I understood when I sent you to that brother, you was going to have to forget all that. I knew that. But that's where we find ourselves. Man, 
That's just too new. God, give me something in this area. Give me something that won't actually have me to believe that all things are new. Give me something that won't actually challenge something that in a lot of cases brings back shame. Man, the last time I stepped out there like that, God, I went broke, lost my house, lost my car. The last time you asked me to do something that looks like this, it just, it turned out so bad. And God's like, I'm doing something new. I'm trying to make a way where there is no way. I'm trying to form rivers in your desert. I'm trying to make a way through the wilderness of your life. But I can't do it as long as you're still tied to everything that was. Oh, amen. Y'all ready to dive in? You know, let's go to Hebrews 6 and 18. And it's just time we destroy every past image of failure. I don't care how much it hurt. I don't care how much shame it may have brought. I don't care about all the different feelings and emotions that came from what happened. Freedom, true freedom in Christ is allowing him to speak in every single area concerning you. And what I found and what I discovered is, and I said this before, is most of the time when God's speaking to us, he's giving us assignments to break these very chains. Man, God tells me to do things that makes me fight so hard with myself. Can I just be honest with y'all? It makes me fight so hard with myself. It makes me have to detach so far from myself and rely so much on him that it only could be faith. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. This is what I said. God tells me things that make me fight so hard with my past, make me fight so hard with prior shame, prior guilt, prior condemnation. Why? Because he knows I'm still tired. And he wants to see me truly free. And what we've unfortunately, a lot of times have downloaded is, man, God's not trying to speak to me to cause me to go somewhere new. He just really wants me to have nice in my comfort zone. (laughs) No, no, no. Boy, God knows us inside and out. And he says, no, I'm renewing each one of you guys every single day. And if I spot any type of fear, if I spot any type of shame, if I spotted any type of things inside of you that I know are not going to be good for the new we're going towards, I'm going to speak something to you that will cause you to have to detach and walk away. He doesn't do it every once in a while. Man, he does it every day. Because he's committed to our wholeness. He's committed to our fullness. He's committed to seeing us 
That's that life. You know, we talk about that life where there's nothing missing. There's nothing lacking. There's nothing broken. Man, God's as committed as we, we believe and we want to be to that. He's just as committed. Yes. And so he wakes up every day with you. He already up. Yeah. But I'm saying as you rise, <laughs> saying we're going to tackle this shame today. Yeah. We're going to tackle this fear today. Yeah. Why well, put off for tomorrow what we could do right now? Right now I could do something with that part of you that's keeping you tied. To the past. Why would I wait tomorrow to deal with this when we can handle this right here, right now? But what we say on the other side is, God, this is so uncomfortable. He's like, yeah, because you're tied to something. God, this is so so challenging. He's like, yeah, because you're tied to something. Watch how easy life gets once you're free. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Y'all ready? Hebrews 6 and 18, I'm reading an amplified version. It says, this, is, was, this was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us. We who have fled to him for refuge. We said, God. And for many of us, this, this was the point. God, I know I need some help. I, I, I know there's some things that my past has shaped that I ain't been able to shake off. And so we came to Christ. We came to him saying, man, we need a refuge. We need a place that we can abide and live in without having to worry about what's going on on the outside. That's what a refuge is. It's a safe place of keeping. Oh, amen. He said, you came to me. You came to him for a refuge so that you might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and to hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. And it says, now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it. A hope that reaches farther and enters into the very certainty of the presence of within the veil, where Jesus has entered in for us in advance, a forerunner having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so what we learn and what we learn from this, and we're going to keep going down. I think we have to be out of here by when, 630? We keep going down. I'm going to keep talking about it tomorrow if we can't. But what it's telling us is, is, When we seek refuge in Christ, there should be a renewed indwelling of strength that occurs. There is a new hope that should be downloaded that should now go ahead of you. This hope that you have should be so strong that when you get to these points, you understand that what's over here is so much greater than what's over there. That literally the hope, the hope of what Christ can do now that I'm in his refuge, it should do something about everything that was. That's what we should be believing. Man, we didn't come in relationship with Christ 
so that we can still have a future that has us tied to what we were. We came into relationship with Christ so that he could take us in. Replace our weakness with our strengths. So that as we look forward, nothing back there matters. Because if we step out on the hope in which we've been called, we shall not be put to shame. But this is where it's all at. And this is where a lot of us, our words have started shaping us to, like I said, go right back to where we were. Amen. Where do we find that at? We find that in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Man, this rope is a little long. I ain't mean to have to walk all the way, <laughs> all the way over there every time. Here we go. <laughs> Y'all there? Yeah. Reading the Amplified Version, it says, But he said to me, My grace, my favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. My grace, my favor, my mercy. You know, mercy is what you get when you wrong. He's saying that now that you're in me, you have this. You you suck, you you sought out refuge in me. And so as you walk forward, you have a life that is lived in me. You have the fruit of my resurrection living with you. I love what Pastor Deborah said two weeks. You have his attributes. And that's what he's saying. My favor in loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Sufficient against any danger. And enables you to bear the trouble manfully. Understand that even if you start to get out here. And you start to just really finally (laughs) once and for all. Deal with it. That you ain't out there alone. I'm working in you. I'm stirring you up. I'm building you up. And that should have you looking this way. Not this way. Because something should have changed when I came. All that, that was that was before you understood all this. Now that you understand all this, this is no problem. Oh, amen. Amen. He said, for my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed and showing themselves most effective in your weakness. (sighs) Shows itself most effective in our weakness. Oh, man, I just, I, just, I just meditate on that thing every time I hear it. I'm sorry, I had a moment in front of y'all. <laughs> but as we're stepping out, how do we know he's with us? Because in the moments where we were most weakness, most weak, we no longer are. And that's where we look, like, you know, I used to, when, when somebody did something like that, I just would back all the way out. But now I'm not feeling like backing out no more. Yes. Now I feel like, no, I have a right yes. towards what I'm pursuing. Yes. I have a right because I'm working with the one who gave me the right. Yes. And so no, 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 no. Like Pastor always told us, if somebody told you no, you was talking to the wrong person. I I have some rights now. No, I'm not not going back. I apologize. If it offends you that I'm so confident now, the last version of me that you met would have ran back. 
But the new version of me that you are now getting used to understands that I am fulfilled through Christ. And in my weakest places, he's most strong. And so I'm not walking forward thinking about what I could do based upon my previous results, but I move forward based upon his results. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities that the strength and the power of Christ, the Messiah, may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. So for the sake of Christ, I am pleased and take pleasure in infirmities. Y'all hear what, I, y'all hear what I'm reading? Is this, is this finally, you know, a lot of times people like to skip over this part because it don't sound so good. But like I say, that part is located over here. This section we about to read is located over here. It's located at the point where you have to forget all of that and only think about all of him. See, we was cool reading this scripture over here because it didn't mean that we had to do anything different with our actions. Oh, I know. I know. So for the sake of Christ, who now dwells within me. I am pleased and take pleasure in infirmities, insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, distresses. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am truly strong in able, powerful, divine strength. What is he saying? He's saying, look, I know this is the point of tension. And I know it's, it ain't easy over here. There's some insults over here. There's some persecution over here. There's some stuff to deal with over here. That's connected to everything you used to be. But understand that you have a new strength to deal with this. And so you shouldn't be afraid of the fight now that I'm working with you. See, and I got to say it because it's just true. A lot of us feel like or felt like now that Christ is living within us, this rope got cut. I don't know when. I don't know when we thought this got dealt with. But Christ is pushing us every single day to deal with it. And he's saying, yeah, I understand it's a challenging spot. And that's where a lot of us get thrown off because, you know, that's not the friendly part of the scripture. And we get back out here and we say, this looks like it did before. It sounds like it did before. It must be what it is before because now I have Christ and Christ has made everything easy. But when the Bible tells us that, no, Christ has given us an inner strength to deal with all this better. He's given us an inner strength on how to deal with this overcome it permanently and be forever disconnected from it. And I just pray, you know, I, you know, when you, when you, I just pray that God is speaking to you guys, the situations that he's speaking to you. You know, I, I try not to throw out too many examples because then we think that's the only thing we're talking about. But everybody has their own personal spot of where this is. And what we're saying is, in 2018, we ain't going back. In 2018, we're expecting the fullness of God. 
we're expecting him day by day to renew us. And we're expecting this thing we are willing to fight for. We are willing to say, no, no, not no more. But I will live in the fullness that you have promised me. And I will understand that it ain't just me out there. But man, how many of you guys know, even, even before, there was, when I would, there's certain places I would go, I don't care where it is, depending on who I'm with. I don't care how dangerous they say it is. I, I will go based on who rolling with me. I, they can say that, look, there's people out there that, man, they don't have your best interest. The moment you step over that threshold out that door, they going to get you. Well, depending on who over here with me on this side determines what I do next. If I look to my left and if I look to my right and I see myself standing with a bunch of soldiers that don't feel like anybody's going to punk them into living the rest of their life in this building, then we going to gird ourselves up together and do something about some people trying to restrict who God has called us to be. And what we have to realize is you rolling with a new team. And although the fight's still out there, man, just check who you rolling with now. Well, um, I'm going to stop right here because uh, I'm going to finish this tomorrow. Amen. But I just know that in 2018, and beyond. What God wants to do with us and what God is going to do with us is going to reveal his glory here on earth. And I'm just committed, committed to being a part of that. I'm willing to fight for it. I mean, I, I, I just, I'm not, I, I, every area, every area. And I know God is ready to walk this thing out with you. And I just, man, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. And we just have to keep and, and just have us just, just just put it in your put it in your your your, your toolbox. Just put it in there. Yes. Man, yes. know that God is with you. Yes. God is fighting right along with you. Yes. And everything that God has promised, everything that God has given you a new image of hope of. It's going to come to pass. It is going to happen. But what do we have to do on this side? Well, we have to download our new way of seeing things. We have to walk in the belief that Christ has purchased for us. Y'all understand he purchased this? He purchased my right to stand up here and talk like this. He purchased it. His blood paid for the authority and power and wisdom and understanding that you get to walk in. 
Not so that you could float over some bed of roses or something. But so that you can, from the inside out, become whole for his use. What is he saying? He's saying if, if your marriage was a thing of challenge, ask me for a new image of hope to fight for. If peace is a challenge, ask me for a new image of peace to fight for. If health is a challenge, ask me for a new image of health to fight for. So that if you go back in the doctor's office and they start repeating some of that stuff that wants to tie you back to the past, you have a new image. You see what I'm saying? You got to... Not just pray you're seeing this in application. Yes. Yes, sir. That's how it works. Amen. Oh, man. Amen. <sighs> I want to keep going. But it's, 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 time, it's, time, it's time. Yes, amen. You know, and oh, man. We, we are about to we're about to just, we're about to just, I don't even know the right word to use. Turn up. There we go. <laughs> you know, you know, I, 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 I went away on a trip. And, uh, you know, while I, was, while I was away, man, God just gave me a new image to pursue concerning our vision. And bringing everybody that comes into contact with it into wholeness. Yeah. And I, I mean, it, it just set a fire just inside of me. Yeah. Knowing that, my God, yes. what are we going to look like on the other side? Y'all, y'all already know where I'm going with this. But y'all some bad mamma jams. <laughs> but... Starting, what is that? I think it's the uh, February the 18th. Starting February the 18th, um, we're going to start our new series on wholeness. And what it is, it's going to be a seven-week journey that we're going to go on. Each week, we're going to cover one of the aspects of Jeremiah 33.6 in our vision. Our vision has a promise of you walking and living in the abundance of life. Peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. Every single person that's a member has a right to that. And what we are going to do, we're going to spend each week, me and Pastor Deborah, each week going over each one of those areas. And I'm just believing God that he's going to give you a new image of hope to attach to that promise. That you're a part of. And that we will all walk in the fullness, wholeness of what God has called us to. And so I'm so excited about that. Y'all excited about that? We're going to take it. um, We're going to record it. um, We're going to package it, make it all nice. And uh, we're actually going to make it a part of what's going to now be called is My RTM Life. And within it, you'll have access 24-7 to this. And so if you ever feel challenged in health, peace, truth, any one of these areas, you can go in, listen to what God has to say about it, get you a new image of hope to pursue. It is so important that we have it in in each one of them. I just love it. Each one of them is tied um, to one of Pastor Poe's book and one of Pastor Deborah's books. And so not only will you have the teaching, but you'll have a book that you can read. Then they're going to take that and they're going to transcribe it in something written. So you have the written, you have the book, you have the videos, and there should be no reason anybody attached to Revealing Truth Ministries isn't walking in the fullness of life. Oh, amen. 
You'll have the truth concerning everything God has purchased for you. And we'll just be some bad man jammers together. Y'all ready for that journey? I'm so ready for it. I'm so excited about it. Amen. We pray that today's message was a blessing to you. If you would like to help us further expand the vision, simply text the word GIVERTM to the number 41444 or visit us online at www.revealingtruth.org. Now remember, Jesus loves you.